And this year, I want to show how we can use custom attributes in our points to make it so that we create a floor on every second, or in this case, third layer of our room. So if we change the room height to four, you can see that there's a floor layer on this, a floor layer on this, and if we set it to 12, you can see that we have multiple floor layers, so one on this one, then one here, and on every third layer, there's a floor. Um, yeah, with that shown, I uh, will jump right into the code. <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is open up our PCG element um, that we can, uh, not this one, uh, our PCG room tutorial. And what the first thing we're going to do in here is we will take a look at all the points we have in the data. We can do this by pressing the A button by clicking on Node. So click on node, press A, and then we can see all the information that the points have. If you don't see anything here, you might have to select one element that's in level over here. And um, what we can see in here is all the information. So the index, the position, the scale, the bounds, uh, the color, the density, and so on and so on. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a custom attribute for example, uh for the row index so the first floor the second floor the third floor the fourth floor and so on um the way we're going to do this is in our wall stacking node so we open this up by double clicking on it and here um the first thing we're going to do is change it so that we are using the parent node that we created in, in another tutorial because we haven't done this for this one yet um, we can do this by going to class settings and then we are going to set this parent class over here to our point loop base. Um, point loop base. Um, if you haven't followed the tutorial, you don't have to do this, but I do this anyways because <laughs> there's a reason why I created the parent node. And then we can delete this execute with context function because we get this from our parent node. And we have to set this Boolean to true because we are using the variable loop on and not the normal loop. Now with this done, we can head over to our uh, point loop base. So if you click on this icon here, you can find the node. And if you open it up, you will open up the node. Okay, in here, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to add the custom attribute to our data. And we can do this by first uh, creating an object, uh, create object. Uh, where is it? Construct object from class. This one, which is going to be a PCG point data. Uh, point data. Then we're going to uh, Initialize it from data. I can't quite explain you why we have to do it like this, but it's done like this in the examples. So yeah, just do it for like this for now until I find a better solution. Um, and then we are going to get a mute uh, cast this to mutable metadata. And this is where we add, have to add our custom attributes to. Um, you might try out uh, to add this directly into this without this construct point data and initialize from data. But if you do it like this, we have a problem that we uh, add this attributes to the data in general before even this node happens. And this can cause problems because we already added this and then we yeah get some errors. So I think you need this construct uh, and initialize node. So just do it like this for now. The examples also do it like that. So yeah. And what we can do here is we can create a float attribute. Now, since this is our parent node, we want this as a parameter. Parameter. So we are going to add a new a new variable over here of type name, and we will make this an array. And we are going to call it custom attributes. These are all the attributes we're going to add. And we will make them all float attributes to make it easier for us 
You can also create a bool attribute or any other type you want, but uh, for the ease of it, I think float attributes are the most useful thing. And otherwise we would have a very complicated setup or a slightly more complicated setup. Uh, so we drag the custom attributes here, then do a for each loop over them and hook this up. And then we are going to plug the array element into here. A default value of zero is fine for us for now because we set this anyways. And then um, I already did this. Uh, we have to get this and drag it into the optional out data of this. So we can actually, so it's used. Um, I already added it to the sequence node. And if you uh, don't know, if you hold control, you can drag those pins around because we need to do this before we do the loop. So do it at the zero pin. Now, this is pretty much everything we need to do in the parent node. Um, to see if it worked, we can open our wall stacker and go to custom attributes, set this to uh, wall index, wall index, compile, save, and if you open this up, we should hopefully see our wall index in our custom data. And if we inspect here, we don't see it. And when we inspect here, we see it as zero because we haven't set it to anything. It's zero for everything. To continue, we have to go to our wall sticker and then our variable loop body, we can um, set this value to something. This is fairly simple to do. We just add a sequence node here to make it easier to uh, see what's happening. And here we are getting our hot metadata and we are uh, setting the attribute. So set float attribute this up and this is our wall index wall index uh, which is going to be this value so the index from our loop if we hit compile save we get an error because we don't plug the point in here we didn't plug the point in here so compile save and now we should see that our wall index goes doesn't work um because we did it the wrong way around. Uh, yes, we did it the wrong way around. So uh, switch this up. And now we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, not five because we didn't have a five, fifth floor. And yeah, that's this for now. We are going to add a couple more attributes for this. For example, a uh, last index, last index, and um, um, room height, and the room height. Um, the room height is so that we can make a floor every second layer, for example, or every third layer, however you want it. And we also add a new one here for, uh, yeah, we already have a room height that's a little bit bad. Uh, let's call this floor. And let's rename this to uh, floor amount, maybe. And this to room height, room height. And we are setting this to an integer of two. The floor amount is compile uh, six. Uh, we might actually create a problem. Let's see. Uh, of errors, uh, uh, still seems fine. If you set this to uh, six, yeah, we get one more, so it's still okay. Um, and what are we going to do with those variables? Uh, we are checking if this index is equal equal to the last index. Uh, to the last index, which is this one. And if this is the case, by creating a branch, hold down B and left click for a shortcut, we can set a float attribute of our uh, last index. Uh, let's rename this to is last index. Is last index. 
and it is last index. Um, if this is true, we set it to one, and we also get the point from here, drag it into here, make it a little bit cleaner. And then we are still needing the room, uh, the third attribute, the room height. Well, uh, let's name, we rename this to is floor layer. Is floor layer. Because that's what we are going to use this variable for. And we are going to, um, how do we make this? Let's add the sequence not here, sequence. Set this and this, and then we set another float attribute uh, based on the point. And for this, we're going to check if the index modulo, so hit, no, uh, that's not modulo, uh, modulo, uh, that's, uh, that is modulo, uh, index modulo, the room height, our new room height, because we switched those variables around, is equal uh, to zero. Uh, modulo gets the, uh, if you divide something, the rest amount. So we can use this for this. And mm, Boolean, uh, uh, branch, yeah, branch. Uh, this one, let's remove this by holding Alt and left clicking. I hook this up. We set it to one. If it's dividable, dividable by three, that's what we check here. Or dividable by our room height, which we need to set to three. Then we set this to one. And since our default value is zero, it should work fine. It compile safe, and we should see that we now have. Nothing. Uh, why don't we have anything? Um, ah, this is the last index, and this is also the last index, so we need to rename this to its floor layer. And now we should hopefully see the correct result if we vector this met metadata in here. Now we should see this result we want, but we don't. After a little bit of tinkering around, we didn't see anything because we selected the wrong element here and this didn't update. So if you don't see it uh, update, you might have to uh, change what's selected here. And now we should see it. So we have uh, its last index for number five and uh, its floor layer for zero, as well as for three and zero three. In order to use this information, we are going to add a point filter here, point filter. And this allows us to filter our points by our attributes. We just need to check this checkbox because we want to use a fixed value instead of another attribute. And we are going to check it for equals and make it a float because we create a float attribute. And this is our, um, and the name of it is, is floor layer. Float value is one because we set our floor layer to one and the rest to zero. And um, to see if it worked, we can add a transform points node, transform points, and another transform point. If we hit D for debugging, we should see that we have our bottom layer, this layer, and then nothing else. So uh, we don't have the top layer because uh, because we create the floor points at the bottom. So um, this one isn't a layer, but this one is the layer. So we have this and the other ones should be DD, um, got the level, um, all the rest. So this one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, and that works so far. But since this are, these are our floor layers, we need to do, do this for our floor. So if we just add a wall stacker here, wall stacker, and drag this into, and copy our point filter, 
to here. We can now add uh, our floors in the inside filter. So everything that is tagged as a floor layer, well, it has the value of a floor layer. We should now see that we have a floor on this layer as well as this layer. And if we increase the height to, let's say 10, we also have a floor on the other layers, which we don't, uh, maybe. Uh, did I do something wrong with the modulo? Probably. <laughs> uh, let's double check. This floor layer, uh, this one, let's, uh, is floor layer one, three, uh, it should spawn one on six. Am I done? Uh, let's see back quickly. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have to uh, set this as well. Uh, the wall amount. Okay, now we get where we want. Uh, yeah. So a floor on every third layer. Um, yep, that's it for this part. Um, hope this helped you so far. Uh, 